when we think about working out, a lot of us think of our big mover muscles, so uh, our biceps and our six-pack abs, and that's um, it's great to strengthen those, but really, muscles you can really categorize into two categories. You've got your movers and your stabilizers. Now, your movers are more superficial muscles on the outside that help us move around, obviously. Our stabilizers are our deeper muscles that only cross one joint, so they're smaller and they're really used to hold our skeleton together to, to maintain our posture, our balance, um, uh, give us a sense of proprioception where we are in space. They're, they're really at the fundamental root of, of holding our bodies together. And if those are not strong, uh, and strong enough so that when we do exercise, we're coming from a place of neutrality and that we're really moving from what you call our core, those are also core muscles really, our stabilizers, our deep inside muscles, then all sorts of injuries start to occur. If you're weak inside and just building uh, muscles on the outside, a lot of misalignments happen, a lot of postural imbalances and leads to tears and strains and tendonitis and, and endless, 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 endless possibilities of what can go wrong there. Um, particularly if we spend all day sitting at a desk and so our posture is very hunched over and we've got um, rounded shoulders and an extended neck and then you go and start working out your biceps, you could see where this could probably lead to some injury because you're not coming from a place of balance. Your shoulder's falling off your rib cage and you're trying to lift weight. Well, that's gonna put a lot of strain on all of this musculature here. So I wanna show you today a couple of exercises used to strengthen those deep core muscles. And now if you're strengthening your moving muscles, your mover muscles and you're moving, to strengthen your core muscles, it's really more about not moving, about holding the position, about stability. So not necessarily your idea of exercise, but it's hard work um, and it is exercise, absolutely. So the first exercise is called bird dog. This does have some movement in it, but the key to the exercise is the non-moving parts. So you wanna get on all fours, and you wanna make sure that your hips and knees are in alignment, so your hips are right on top of your knees, and your feet are right behind your knees, they're not going in or out, that, that's nice and straight, that you've got your wrists right under your shoulders, okay? And you wanna make sure that you've got some engagement in the abdominal region so that you're not just falling in like that. You wanna lift up, you wanna engage the core. That's what's gonna really hold you and strengthen you and that's what we're working, okay? And these are muscles that get very, very weak when we're sitting at desks for a long period of time or just sitting, we're not using them, or on the couch. So engage those cores, lift up through the, through the belly, kinda of give it a little bit of that pelvic tilt that we've spoken so much about and stabilize your scapula, your shoulder blades, so that you're not falling like that, you're not pushing up like that, but it's really in a nice, strong, neutral position. Lock it in, and then from this nice, stable position, you're going to lift one leg out like that, um, flex the foot so that you're pressing through the heel, okay, and then lift the opposite arm and reach out. Now, I want you to think not so much about lifting up as reaching out. So it's almost like there's a tug of war going on and somebody's pulling your leg back and someone's pulling your arm forward and you've got a nice opposition. It should feel pretty good, it's a nice stretch, but make sure that you're not starting to do all these wiggling weird things. You want to try to have your leg and your arm really in a straight line with your back. So they're not you know, too far up, they're not too far down, they're really making a nice line. Um, I'm obviously looking over at the camera, but you keep your neck nice and aligned, but not up, not down, but just a nice neutral neck that extends right out from your spine, nice and long. And you just hold it, engage your core, keep your scapula strong, your scapular stabilizers, reach out through the heel, reach out through the arm. If you're shaking, that's good. That's what in yoga they would call your prana, okay? And come on down other side. Reaching out through your left foot this time, okay? Engage your core, keep it nice and strong, and reach your arm out, okay? It's all about holding the posture. If you start to lose it, 
come on out, reset, re-engage your core, re-engage your scapular stabilizers, and try again. Try to keep your hips forward, really both, both of them should be, think about them uh, equal distance from the ground. Both hip bones should be equal distance from the ground. There shouldn't be any of this, right? There shouldn't be too much pressure on your wrist here or your knee because you're lifting up. You're lifting up through your core and you're reaching out. Nice opposition. And you hold it and you breathe. Okay? So, because I was explaining, you don't necessarily have to hold those for quite as long, but you do want to hold them and take a few breaths. And you want to do about 10 to 12 reps. And when I say reps, I don't mean this is one and this is two. I mean that's one. So uh, both sides is one. Um, so you want to do 10 to 12 on both sides, in other words, okay? And then take a break and then do a second set, okay? Um, if, if you do a first set and you're like, Phew, that's all I can do and I'm losing the position, that's enough for you. If you do two sets and you're like, Phew, I could totally do a third, go ahead and do a third, okay? The good thing about these core stabilizers is that uh, the exercises is that you can always build on them and make them more challenging or back off or do whatever you need to modify them, particularly the second one. So the second one is about plank pose, okay? So come onto your hands and knees again. We'll start there, okay? Knees under the hips, hands under, and just come down onto your forearms, like that. Make sure your elbows are under your shoulders and your arms out right in front, not in or out, okay? And then push up, up onto your onto your toes, so like a plank, so it's a forearm plank, okay? Now, don't let your belly fall, don't push up like that, really try to have a nice straight line and hold strong, don't let your scapula fall here, don't let them go here, nice and neutral, and again, neck in line, not up, not down, hold a neutral line, and that's all you do, you just hold and breathe, and you can feel it, it's work, you're not moving, but you're working, and you're working your core. And this is fundamental. This is what you want to get in place first before you go start training for that marathon or doing weightlifting and, and uh, you know, get your six pack abs. This is what you really need first to keep yourself safe and make those exercises beneficial and effective rather than just set you up for injury. Okay, if this is good, if you're good like this, go ahead and come up onto your hands. And so now you have sort of what you know is your general top of a push-up, your plank pose, top of a push-up. Again, engage that core, lift it up, don't let it fall. Don't push up, we're not doing downward dog. We're just doing a nice diagonal line. Tuck that tailbone, keep that neck in alignment, keep those scapula nice and stabilized on the back. Okay, this feels good. Go ahead and come onto your side. So you've got your forearm, and you've got your legs stacked, your ankles stacked one on top of the other, okay? Now, you have to really work to keep yourself centered so that you're not doing all of that stuff. You want one nice straight diagonal line, okay? And you just hold and breathe. It's hard work. That good? Go ahead and push yourself up and lift. Now you've got the ankle stacked, again, diagonal line, keep the neck in alignment. You can do a stretch overhead if you like, or reach straight up to the sky. And you just hold, obviously with this one, you would do it on both sides because you're just getting one side at a time. When this gets easy, you can start doing all kinds of cool things with the leg. You can put it in front actually if it's, if it's um, a little too tough, you can balance yourself with the leg in front or the leg in back and push up. Or if you can, just stack the ankles on top. Try lifting one up, all of this stuff. But if you're a forearm plank position person and that's good enough for you, just do that. And this is all stuff you can work up to. And when you know, you get to the next one. So if you go from, you know, your forearm to your holding posture like this, you're like, yeah, my core is strengthening. I'm getting somewhere, I'm moving. It's always nice to have places to go because then you can really see your accomplishments. You can, you've got a barometer, you can measure like, okay, I'm getting more, I'm getting stronger, I'm getting more stable. And that's the root. That's what you want to do. You want to strengthen the deep core, the scapular stabilizers. These are the things that are going to hold you, support you, help your alignment, and then go ahead and play tennis and golf and run and do all the things that you love doing 
without that risk of injury and you'll be better at it. You'll have more energy um, because your body won't be working so hard to try to hold you together. All right, great exercises for your stabilizers. For more information, visit my website, www.rachel-richards.com. I'll see you next time.